Hello guys, I'm Tanmay Gupta and I got All India Rank 1 in NEET 2021. I currently studied in AIMS Delhi and today I'm going to teach you how to take guesses correctly in NEET examination. So I will tell you the pros and cons of guessing when to take a guess and when not to take a guess and of course how to take a guess. So a very important question that comes to the mind of every NEET aspirant is should we take a random guess? So from my side, no, you shouldn't. Uh, every time I took a random guess, I used to get it wrong. <laughs> Sometimes we do the math and we come to know that uh, this is what one of my friend taught me. So I will tell you what the math he told me about taking a random guess. He told me that he was uh, if we have 12 questions, we don't know. Now with probability, we will get three of them correct on random guess. We will get 12 marks from these three. Now we are left with 9 questions which we will get incorrect. We get minus 9 and the total we get is 3 when we uh, knew nothing about these 12 questions. But the thing is this kind of math never works. It never worked for me. I would guess minus 12 <laughs> personally and you won't get the 3 questions correct and I am sure that random guess is not the uh, right thing to do in NEET. So the thing is what to do then, if not random guess then how to take the guesses. So the thing is a very important option for the aspirants is elimination. So you have four options in the NEET exam in every question. Go through all the options, you might, know, you might not know the correct one but you might know which are the incorrect. If you can find the three incorrect ones then you get your answer even though you didn't know it. So this is a method which can be used in uh, physics, chemistry, bio, all the subjects. And also one important uh, thing in this method is you can use it during the mock test. So in the mock test when you go through all the four options you will build, build on the concepts. You will learn new things, in, especially in biology, uh, in botany, zoology. The, uh, the options are always relevant. They are a little deviated from the right one. but when you read the options you gain knowledge so for biology it's very important you go for elimination in most of the questions uh, try not to select the right option without reading all the four options for physics chemistry also elimination works very nicely in physics personally speaking with by looking at the units of the uh, question and uh, units in which the options are given you can easily eliminate some of the uh, options in chemistry too, in physical chemistry as you see most of the questions are calculating ones. So by looking at the options and then the questions you can eliminate some of the uh, options directly. So you won't have to look at them while solving the questions and the question solving becomes really easy in that. So the very important thing that NTA loves these days is the not factor which I call it. So the not factor is that they will put a very lengthy statement and then put a not in the end and the uh, children won't read that not and would get the option incorrect. I used to do a lot of mistake in this thing during my mock test and I had to work on it really hard to get all the uh, all the questions with the not thing correct. So whenever you, whenever you read a question do look for that not. If you have that not and you don't read that even though you have the knowledge of the question you will get the question incorrect. So just to sum up uh, in biology go for elimination. Uh, and yes, one important question that NEET aspirants look for is that what to do if we have doubt in two options. We have already eliminated the two options and now we are left with two and we have to choose between the two. So the thing is it really feels bad to leave a question when you have a knowledge about it but you are stuck in two options. So I would say that uh, if you uh, can leave the question. Um, and you are stuck with the two options, you don't have any idea about what to go, how to proceed further with that. So best thing is to leave the question. Another thing you can do in that case is go with the instincts. So if your instincts say that you should attempt it then go for it. Uh, this can be done in the two option question but if you have no idea, no idea in general about that question, don't go for a random guess. Chemistry, if we talk about inorganic, so inorganic chemistry is a thing in which if you know, you know, if you don't know, you can't do anything about it. And same is for organic, if you know the equation, if you know how to proceed forward, you can go. 
but if you don't know the equation only if you don't know which kind of mechanism this reaction is going to follow then you can't take a random guess in organic so you can go for elimination in both of these you can eliminate the option which are literally not possible but don't go for a random guess uh, in physical chemistry again look for the units uh, whenever you read the question read the units very properly if it is ml or liter or if it is millimeter centimeter pico, uh, picometer anything read it very uh, do one thing whenever you read the questions underline the units underline the units in the question and the answer and then when you have got the answer then compare the units because units are a thing that uh, usually make the questions wrong we know everything but we end up selecting the wrong units and then we end up getting the wrong answer so the same is with physics physics theoretical questions um, you can think about them because most of the theoretical questions in physics also you can uh, use your basic knowledge and get the answer but again the numericals that you get in physics um, you can solve the numerical to a level that after that you can take a guess like Suppose the options are in sine, cos, and cot. So by solving the question, you might get an idea that the answer is going to come in sine, and then you can select the sine one. This saves time, but it might decrease the accuracy. So try solving the whole question, but if the time constraint is there, then try to take this shortcut. Also look for the negative and positive values. Sometimes we get a we get an answer, but we don't look for the uh, signs that if it is positive or negative and get uh, and get the wrong answer selected so i think these are general things that we have to look while guessing the question in need and i hope this helps